Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm answering a question from a player who says, look, I'm all arms right now. How do I use my hips more while I'm batting? So number one, great question. Number two, I'm really glad that you, you know, recognize the importance of using your hips and your lower half and your legs in the baseball swing because it's so important. As I always say, you know, your legs are your biggest and strongest muscles on your body. And I think we need to utilize them in order to maximize your bat speed and your power. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. How do you stop being all arms? How do you use your legs and use your hips more in the swing? Uh, so I hope that you're excited for that. And you know, before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, these instructional videos that we're coming out with on a weekly basis, then be sure to do me a favor and hit that like button. Let me know if I should continue making them. Uh, please go ahead and do that right now before we jump into it. I'd really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. So if you like these instructional videos, hit the like button. Without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so I'm obviously in the batter's box right now, but tip number one, I think it starts outside the batter's box, all right? And what I mean by that is you need to build strength and power and explosiveness in your lower half, in your hips, in your legs, outside the batter's box in order to really have it transfer to the batter's box, okay? So there's several different ways that you can do this. Obviously, one of the ways is in the weight room. You know I'm a big fan of compound movements for athletes in the weight room, so these would be things like squats. You can do back squats, you can do front squats, you can do split squats. Uh, you could do deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts. You can do lunges. Kettlebell swings are great for baseball players to build that you know, lower half strength and power and explosiveness. So there's so many different exercises that you can do in the weight room. I highly recommend get in the weight room. That's number one. Another thing you can do, plyometrics. These are great because these are body weight exercises. These are explosive. And everything we do on the baseball field, from hitting to throwing to stealing bases, everything is explosive. So I think the more you can mimic that in your training, the better off you'll be. You know, no sport are you, you know, laying down on a bench and doing bench press. It's not to say I'm totally against bench press. I'm not by any means, but I'm just saying the more sport specific you can be, the more baseball specific you can be, the better off you'll be. And I think plyometrics are great for baseball players. So lift weights, you know, do plyometrics. Another thing, medicine ball exercises, speaking of baseball specific, medicine ball exercises, specifically rotational exercises and tornado ball exercises. So if you've never seen what a tornado ball is, I'd highly recommend you, you check it out buy a tornado ball and you can you know stand up against a concrete wall and what it is is basically you know another version of rotational medicine ball exercises so a lot of what we do on the baseball field not only is explosive but it's also rotational right hitting throwing everything has a rotational component to it the more we can train that off the field the more it's going to transfer to the actual batter's box so rotational medicine ball exercises and tornado ball exercises are great all right so we've got lifting Okay, we've got plyometrics, we've got medicine ball exercises and tornado ball exercises. And then another thing I think that you should do is, you know, hip mobility exercises. And once you do all of those things, you consistently add those into your training protocol, then I think you're ready for some of the other things that we're going to talk about in this video. But it starts not here in the batter's box, but it starts actually outside the batter's box. All right, tip number two for utilizing your hips more in your baseball swing. I think you got to understand the kinetic chain and you don't have to go in crazy detail about this. I'm a big fan of keeping hitting simple, but I do think that you need to understand that hitting and the baseball swing is a sequence of events and one domino happens and then that causes another domino to fall. It's a, it's a chain reaction. It's a sequence of events. Okay. And specifically one event that I think you need to know about that relates to using your hips hips and hip rotation is you need to understand that obviously in your swing, right, we load and we stride and we get to our launch position and we understand that there's a rotational part of the swing, right? But what you really have to grasp is that rotational part of the swing does not start until that front heel, this heel right here, your front heel, once that heel plants, once that heel drops, that's what helps my hips violently rotate through the zone. Ted Williams once said that the hips lead the way. I couldn't agree more. The hips do lead the way. Um, and you just, I, I think it's, it's important to have an understanding of, yes, the, the hips do lead the way and the rotational part of the swing really starts when that front toe, not when the toe lands, but when you're after your front toe lands, when your heel drops, that's what helps pull everything else through the zone, okay? So you, you've got to understand 
that component. Another component I think you have to understand about the kinetic chain, like we talked about, it's a sequence and it happens rapidly, but we do not step and swing at the same time, okay? A lot of younger players that are first learning the game, I think they think that you know you load and then you kind of you step and swing at the same time like this, and that's simply not true. It's not a you know step one, step two. I don't really like breaking, hitting down into okay, load, stride, hips, hands. I don't really like doing that because it's a it's a sequence of events and it happens has to be fluid, has to be natural, right? But I think just again understanding the kinetic chain, understand that you know step one does have to happen. It's not step and swing at the same time. All right. And the last part about understanding the kinetic chain is you have to understand that hip rotation depends on pitch location, okay? So what I mean by that is on an inside pitch here, if I adjust this, this T, and that's an inside pitch, on an inside pitch when I'm hitting the ball more out in front, okay, my hips are going to, you know, fully rotate in order to, to hit this baseball, right? My hips fully rotate on an inside pitch. On a middle pitch, you still want to get your hips into the baseball, but on a middle pitch, here I'll just move this so it's easier for you to see, all right, I fully rotated on inside pitch. On a middle pitch, my hips are not going to rotate quite as much, and then on an away pitch, if the pitch is out here like this, my hips are obviously still going to rotate, but they're not going to rotate as much. So away, they rotate the least, middle they're going to rotate a little bit more, and inside they're going to fully rotate. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground so far. I've got two more tips for you, but really quick, let's recap, okay? so. We want to use our hips more. We don't want to be all arms. Well, I think it starts outside the batter's box. It doesn't start here. It starts outside the batter's box. So that's number one. We talked about lifting weights, plyometrics, all that good stuff, okay? Secondly, I think you need to understand the kinetic chain. Not super in detail, but you just have to have an understanding of the swing a little bit. You have to understand that it's a sequence of events. We don't step and swing at the same time. Our hips lead the way, all that good stuff. Now, two more quick little tips that'll really help you out. Uh, tip number three, okay? You have to land with your front foot slightly open, okay? So, obviously, when you start, you're in your starting position here, you're in your stance, okay? And then you load. As the pitcher is delivering the pitch, you obviously load and you stride. And when your front foot hits the ground, this is considered your launch position when your front foot hits the ground, okay? And with your front foot, you have to have that landing slightly open like mine is here. We don't want to have it landing with our toes pointing towards the pitcher fully open, but we definitely don't want to have it closed like this, okay? The reason being, if I land with this front foot closed and I try to, you know, my, my heel drops like this and I try to swing, I cannot get my hips into the baseball because this foot is closed. I mean, try this at home. This is about as much as I have for hip rotation and it feels really tight in that hip and it feels really awkward. So we can't land with that front foot closed because if we do, I can't get my hips into the ball. And if I land with it open like this, then my energy is already spent. So it has to be, you know, maybe a 45 degree angle. But when you land with that front foot slightly open like this, then my heel drops and it allows my hips to naturally rotate, allows my hips to lead the way, and allows my hips to fully rotate into the baseball. Okay, so that's a big tip there is you have to make sure that you land with your front foot slightly open. All right, and then last tip, I want you to think about smashing the bug under your front heel, okay? So this is kind of a play on words a little bit. You always hear about squashing the bug, and I do not recommend squashing the bug. I don't think it should be taught. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it's just to, to get hitters to use their hips more, but I think it, it, it's silly because, yes, your back foot in the baseball swing it is going to, it's not stuck in mud, it's not stuck in concrete. Your back foot is going to move a little bit in the baseball swing, but it's because of something else. Remember we talked about hitting is a sequence of events. It's, it's like dominoes falling, right? And it's because you do some of these other things. It's, it's because you land with your front foot slightly open. It's because your hips are violently rotating. My hips rotating actually pull my back heel off the ground, and a lot of times they'll pull me up onto this front toe, and they might even pull this back foot forward towards the pitcher. So it's not squashing this bug with my back foot. It's not thinking about that as an input. That's actually an output. It's, it's the result of other things that happen in the swing. But regardless, you always hear squash the bug. I don't think you should squash the bug. If you think about a bug, think about a bug under your front heel. So what I mean is, again, we load and we stride, and when we land, we actually land, you know, not on our tippy toe like this, but we don't land flat footed, right? We actually land kind of on our toe, kind of on the ball of our foot here, and then the rotational part starts when that heel plants 
into the ground. That has to be a violent move, an aggressive move, because that's what helps with that hip rotation. So if you want to think about a bug situation, think about a bug underneath this front heel, and then you're going to slam that heel down. That's what's going to help you violently rotate and get the most bat speed and most power. A quick little thing you can do to really overemphasize that with hitters is you know go grab a, a dog toy with a squeaker in it or go grab a squeaker from a stuffed animal a little squeaker and put that underneath your heel and you can just sit here pretending like you already loaded and strided get to your launch position with your your, your front heel up and smash that heel and understand this sequence of events here so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do me a favor hit that thumbs up button right now smash it be sure you turn it blue and be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you next time.